Today, I want to talk about improving your grades as a student majoring in computer science. More specifically, I will talk about the good habits that helped me with attaining a higher GPA, how to play the university grades metagame, and lastly, provide some advice on the mentality you should have about grades in general. I have talked at length about all the courses I have taken in a previous video, and you can even see the grades I got in them there. Having graduated from the Honors Computing Science program at the University of Alberta with first class honors, I have a lot of helpful things to share. So in this video, I will summarize my experience and give advice based on what worked for me and what I saw working for others. Speaking of advice, let's begin. Let's start this discussion by talking about the different habits you can build that can help you get higher grades. Oh, by the way, I will not be talking about problem solving and studying techniques, as their effectiveness depends on each person. There are plenty of other resources that talk about this, so do your research and take the time to figure out what works for you. First things first, getting good and consistent sleep. This tends to be overlooked by students who tend to participate in misery measuring contests, bragging about just how little sleep they are getting. I can confidently thank a consistent sleeping schedule for carrying me through the worst parts of my more difficult semesters. Let's quickly throw in the second one. Get some form of exercise, hopefully every day. Now, this may make me seem like a hypocrite. After all, look at me, I'm a goddamn stick. But getting exercise is incredibly useful in fighting off brain fog. I used to walk about two to four kilometers every day during university. And during the pandemic, I stopped and the brain fog ruled in. I never noticed brain fog being an issue before I stopped walking. And after a prof I'm very close to pointed out the obvious to me, I started walking again. The mind fog started to dissipate decently quickly after that. You don't even need to hit the gym. Just do something to get the blood flowing. All right, let's move on to the next tip. Create a schedule for every day and try to stick to it as much as possible. As an example, here's a week from a schedule I adhered to rather closely during my last semester. As you can notice, there were some gaps and there were fun events in there too. In essence, a schedule lets you plan out and go through your definition of a day well spent. Do you want to spend two hours playing video games on Tuesday? Then go for it. Do you have a big assignment coming up? Put up four three-hour blocks in your week to work on it. Planning your schedule is only useful if you adhere to it. Therefore, you need to learn how to plan enough time to actually get stuff done. Here's a tip for this. If you finish early, then don't start doing other work, take a break. Or maybe even plan and reschedule similar tasks now knowing that they do not take that long. However, do not keep working after your scheduled time is over. Add more blocks later as needed and let your subconscious do some of the work for you as well. Schedules help you define time for conscious thinking. And when you are doing something else entirely, your brain will keep subconsciously solving the problems you were previously thinking about for you. Trust me, in a really weird way, adhering to a schedule is super liberating because you can have actual guilt-free time off just because you know precisely when you will be working and when you can goof off. All right, that's enough fawning over scheduling. Let's talk next about starting your assignments early. You should really do that. When I say early, I mean do them as early as possible. This is because it gives you more time to get help if needed, more time for your subconscious to work out the problems, and more time for stress-free conscious thinking. However, in CS, a different benefit of starting early is far more important. It gives you time to design your solutions in such a way that your code is easy to put together. You have no idea how many students I had to help untangle spaghetti for hours as a TA, just because they didn't spend 30 minutes thinking through how to even approach the implementation of an assignment. There was something that I just mentioned here that is actually quite important. Get help early, get help often. This is typically done by either going to the professor's office hours with any questions you have or to the teaching assistants during labs and help sessions. I was known for crowding the professor's office hours, especially since nobody else would show up. The thing is, professors and TAs can only help you if you come early, and it seems that nobody took advantage of that. This is where starting your work early and planning your schedule ahead of time is super useful. And do not be afraid to come to the office hours and help sessions. The profs and TAs are there and it's their job to help. You are not inconveniencing them. Do not worry about it. Last tip is to practice ahead of midterms and finals and practice a lot. Do not just read the lecture content and assume that you will remember how to do the questions in an exam just because you read it and remember it now. If the prof gives a sample midterm or final, actually do the questions in their entirety at least once. Try to resolve some of your assignment questions and maybe even the examples from the slides and textbooks if you have the time. 
doing actual practice of the things that you might do in an exam is one of the best ways to both improve your confidence and performance in exams. All right, that's all the tips that I wanted to impart on you. As you can see, this list of things to do takes surprisingly little time to maintain, so consider starting these good habits as they will make sure that you have the best chance at attaining higher grades. However, doesn't picking up these habits sounds like quite a pain? Don't you wish there was something you could do outside of classes to improve your grades without necessarily putting in much work during the semester? Well, there is a way actually, and it is what I call the university grades metagame. So let's talk about that next. I am sure I got you interested either by the title of this section already or by the hook in the last section of this video. So don't bother motivating this much. I will start by defining what the university metagame is. The university metagame is effectively everything you do pertaining to your degree outside of taking the classes or doing the coursework. If this didn't quite make sense yet, I will just start with the metagame tips and you will pick up on what I mean quite quickly. First tip is to take fewer classes in each semester. At the University of Alberta, if you want to graduate in four years, then you would have to take five classes in fall and five classes in winter. Trust me, five classes a semester is a really miserable experience, and you have to context switch too much between each class. It is much easier to get higher grades if you only have to take four courses a semester, or even only three. The other benefit is that you are far more likely to learn the material better if you take fewer courses in a given semester. Yes, you might not graduate in four years, but life is a marathon and not a sprint. Plus, you will have more opportunities for internships and research. Oh, uh, do make sure to not accidentally take too few courses to remain in your program. This can also affect certain scholarships, and if you pay a flat tuition fee no matter how many courses you take, then it might be a touch pricey. Do your research, but it is a good strategy to improve your grades. Next tip is to take overall easier classes. Yes, you might not get the most out of your university experience, but if you care about getting really high grades, taking easier classes is a damn good strategy. How would you know what classes are easier? Places like Rate My Prof, your university's subreddits, and your university's Discord servers are a good place to do your research. Another tip along these lines is to pick the class section with a better prof. After all, if the prof is garbage and you don't understand them at all, then you likely will do worse. And if the prof is brilliant, then you likely will find it far easier to be motivated about the class. Rate my prof, Reddit and Discord will yet again come in useful as you do your research. This next tip is about building your schedule. Do not overload on project heavy classes in one semester. Also, do take easier classes at the same time as the harder classes. It's all about balance. If your schedule is too heavy, you simply won't have the time to do everything, which will definitely impact your grades. Next tip is to not fall for GPA booster meme classes. There are classes that are called GPA boosters, but I have seen really good students struggle in them nonetheless. Why? Well, either because they cared so little that they couldn't bother to study, or because they just didn't get the material. The former was my story with Econ 101. If you must take a GPA booster class, then at least make sure the topic is really damn interesting and you are taking it for fun, not just because you expect to get a high grade. After all, a lot of people will take it for the same reason, so the curves in those classes can get rather… Um, unreasonable. Anyways, this tip is for salvaging a bad situation. If your university allows it, make sure to take the withdrawal option instead of failing the class if you see that that's where it's heading. There is no shame in withdrawing from a class, as it will at least not dunk on your GPA, but an F will destroy it. Be aware of all the options that uni gives you to not destroy your GPA by accident. Other things include taking some classes pass-fail instead of four grades, but I don't know many unis that have such a thing besides the University of Toronto. Do your research as it is very helpful. Lastly, if you want higher grades, then take higher level classes. Like look, this is a graph of average GPA by course level I have taken. As you go with higher level courses, the average grade goes up. This is not even some secret, my university makes it publicly known what their target GPAs are for course levels. Therefore, do not spend too much time on the first and second year courses. I really hope that you get what I mean by the university grade metagame now. It's nothing fancy, but following these tips can have a profound effect on your grades. But should you really care about grades all that much in the first place? That is precisely what we will talk about next. 
I'm sure that hearing grades don't matter from a kid that did well in school is not pleasant, but please bear with me, I will qualify what I mean. And weirdly enough, having a healthier mindset and mentality about grades can positively affect them. So let's talk about this from the beginning. First, I would like to point out the obvious. Good grades is a relative term. For some people, having good grades is just passing all the classes and remaining in the program. For some people, having good grades means getting only a single grade below an A in a semester. If you didn't quite catch on yet, good grades are not the same as high grades. This is actually a rather important distinction, because getting objectively high grades is only useful in very few circumstances in computer science. One is for scholarships, another is for the ultra-competitive internships at places like Jane Street, Two Sigma, Hudson River Trading, and so on. Oh, and another obvious one is the competitive graduate programs. Outside of that, the high grades of 3.5 GPA and above is not really all that important. I hope that I said something jarring right now. A 3.5 GPA is high. This is because with a GPA of 3.5, you can get into most graduate schools, you become eligible for certain honors or distinctions, and it's a cutoff for some general scholarships. Additionally, most employers don't look at your GPA at all. Even at places like Google, if you have a 3.2 and above, they will not look at it again. And that's Google. So now think about an average software company. If you have above a 2.7, you will be good in most cases. And if you have less than that, but you did get your degree, then just don't talk about your grades. So back on the discussion of good grades. Good grades are relative to what you can achieve. Therefore, to define good grades in your own context, you need to figure out what grades you need to achieve what you want to achieve, and then figure out what you can actually attain. One topic that is useful here is the Pareto Principle. The Pareto Principle states that 80% of the result is achieved with 20% of the effort and the remaining 20% of the result takes the remaining 80% of the effort. And keep in mind, your responsibility as a CS student is to make sure that you come out of university as a well-rounded individual. So let's look back at what I said about good grades. You need to figure out what grades you need, then figure out what grades you get if you put in about 20% of your time outside the classroom into studying and doing assignments. And with some exceptions, that is likely to be 80% of the best grade you could get. If with just that 20% effort, you can achieve the grades you need, then congratulations! You get to spend 80% of your time on personal projects, figuring out what you want to do after university, getting internships, doing interview prep, having fun with friends, doing extracurriculars, getting more sleep, and maybe holding down a part-time job to help with the bills. That matters a lot more than attaining a perfect GPA. If with 20% effort you cannot get the grades you need, then start to use all the tips I've already mentioned, like planning out your schedule, getting help, and metagaming the university. Those should help you get to the grades you need, and that is what I would consider getting good grades. Oh, and there's another important phrase, comparison is the thief of joy. Don't forget, there will always be someone that is better than you at one or a couple things. Grades are such an easy thing to compare that most people get obsessed with it. Well, let me tell you, nobody is better than you at everything you are good at at once. And if the allure of unattainably high grades is still impossible to break, then let me mention the backwards law. The backwards law is the idea that the more you pursue feeling better all the time, the less satisfied you become, as pursuing something only reinforces the fact that you lack it in the first place. Now, I'm not about to make a video on this, especially when a good video on this topic already exists. So please go check out the video from Einzel Ganger called The Backwards Law if you want to hear more on this topic. That video is quite good. Either way, I'm sure that you can tell very easily how the backwards law applies to chasing high grades. Anyway, this video is rather long already, so let's wrap it up. Man, wasn't this an information dense video, eh? We first talked about some tips and habits that should give you the best chance at good grades during the semester. Then we discussed some techniques that are useful to metagame your university experience and attain better grades as a result. And the last thing we discussed was defining good grades along with how to figure out what grades you should aim for using the Pareto Principle. So if you found any of that useful, interesting or insightful, then please consider subscribing to my channel and maybe even liking this video. Thank you for your time, bye.